All right, today we're going to be throwing an enclosed form that becomes a lidded form. So this was thrown as one piece all together. And then later I cut it down here and I'll show you a little bit about that. Um, so this is what we're going for. Play just like normal. I'm going to open up and throw a cylinder. Opening up, I'm going to compress my bottom as usual. I'm going to open a little wider. Okay, and I'm compressing this bottom really nicely. And then I'm going to be doing my pulls. So like I said, I'm aiming for a cylinder. Obviously you can take the same principle and make a larger pot with a lid or a smaller one. So here's my cylinder. I think I'll get just maybe one more pull out of this. Once had a pottery teacher tell me that I could only throw as long or as tall as I could hold my breath. And that's something interesting that I have found to be true. So I'm going to squeeze out my sponge and absorb any moisture that I have inside because I'm going to close this up so I don't want any liquid sitting in there. And then I'm going to wet my hands and I'm going to place them on the outside and I'm going to do what's called collaring, which is kind of where you just gently strangle the neck of your pot until it comes in. Collaring displaces the clay, usually somewhat unevenly, so you can already see that this is a little uneven, that's normal. Um, don't try to do it all at once, it'll start flapping around and you might flop your top. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little compression pull here, I'm not really trying to get it any taller, but I am trying to get it to come in still. So it takes up more of the pot than you think it will. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this top because I think it's just gonna be in my way. Okay, and I'm setting that aside. I'm gonna keep closing in. little bit left on the top to make my knob. A knob is not required, but I like to have a knob, so I'm going to make sure that I leave one. Okay, so now I've got this enclosed form. The air is trapped in there, so that's something I need to think about when I make moves. So my next step is going to be taking a rib tool on the outside. I want my outside to be nice and uh, smooth before I press something into it, I kind of want to have a straight aspect. So I'm making this edge straight. I found that that makes it easier for me to get the lid to line up nicely. Okay, and I'm putting some ridges in this knob. You want to make sure that your knob uh, is the type that you can actually grab. Usually that means you want to have a slight indentation under and have it come out on top. If you just have it be like all the same width it's a little less simple to grasp. You don't need a knob if you can get your hand across it, but if you can't, make a knob and make it a nice one. 
okay? I'm gonna finish doing a little shaping on the outside here. Keep in mind wherever I press, that air has to go somewhere because it's enclosed. All right, so that's looking pretty good for me and for what I wanna do. Let me get this off. All right, some final little moves here. Okay, so I've got that there. I've got my straight part here, which is where I'm gonna make my lid. I'm kind of liking this angular thing, so I think I'm gonna keep it up and make this another little angle that comes on in here. Define that edge a little bit. And recenter this knob. All right, so I'm liking that. Okay, then from here, I'm going to get actually half of a clothes pin that's been cut in half. And I'm gonna press it in where I want my lid to be. And that's enough, just about. I could probably do a little bit more. Right, and that's pretty good. The last thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that my edge is still lined up here because if it's become misaligned, it's not gonna make a very good fit top to bottom. But that's looking pretty good to me. And that is the first part of how you make the lidded form. I'm gonna have a second video that shows how to get the lid off and what to do next.